Hello, hello. Welcome to our live stream. It's Ned from Caspio. Let me know if you can hear me okay so that we can begin today's presentation. I do have quite a bit of ground to cover today. So we'll keep the chit chat for later, but um, loud and clear. Hey, welcome. Good to see you. Sounds good. Hey, Clay, I just got your comment on YouTube. There is a way to fix the autocomplete on a modal so it shows up. I'll email you separately after today's live stream and let you know how to modify the code. Okay. There's a workaround. Um, yeah, sounds good. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be building a knowledge base application. It's a public facing knowledge base application, but you can just as easily make it internal for your needs if needed. Um, I'm going to give you a live example of the application first so that you can see exactly what we plan on developing. And then we're going to go into Caspio and develop exactly 15 data pages. So it'll be a fast paced presentation today, but the good news, the video will be on YouTube so you can watch it at your own pace later on. Yeah, I just want you guys to see how quickly I go about building these applications and my approach. And a lot of it is just muscle memory, you know, repetition. Practice makes perfect or permanent, depending on your philosophical bend, I guess. <laughs> um, once, you, once you get in tune with what you need to click inside the platform, then it's really easy just to navigate back and forth. So yeah, using a little bit of no code and no code today, we're going to build this entire application. So the idea here behind this app is imagine you have a homepage and you want to provide a public facing knowledge base uh, for your website visitor. And the knowledge base can be comprised of, you know, any kind of article it could be tech tips. It could be release notes, system requirements, um, depending on the products that you provide for your website. And we have a very simple search interface. I have the categories listed here and we can filter. And then we see all the articles that I have for my sample data. If I click inside this one here, converting tables to directories, which we're going to do today, uh, you see uh, instructions how to do that. And then underneath that, as a website visitor, I can say if I found that helpful or not and provide my additional feedback. And we can also go back to searching. Uh, the application has two levels of users. We can log in as a tech writer or we can log in as the admin. Tech writers are responsible for their own articles. So let's go ahead and log in. Oh, did I forget my, is it Sarah Lee? I hope it's Sarah Lee. Hold on one second. Let me think. Uh, let's try company.com. And let's log in with the password. Of course, it's incorrect. Give me a second. I can't believe I've actually forgotten my <laughs> login credentials already. Um, who is my tech writer that I use? Let's see. Uh, we're going to log in as. So the first, there's Sakori, Mary, Sally Lee. I was logging in as Sally Lee. Okay. So let's try to log in again. So where's my application? Here we go. So switch user. Sally Lee at company.com. And now I should be able to log in. No, no, I'm logged in. Here we go. So now as a tech writer, I have full capability to filter my articles that I'm publishing. Um, we can go inside the details and you can also see the article status published or unpublished. All four of these are published. I can go into the details and here I can modify um, the content of that article and I can choose to unpublish that article. Let's say it's outdated. I need to make some changes to it. And underneath that, we can see all the feedback that came in from, uh, website visitors. I can also publish a new article, uh, select my category title, article details, and check to publish. Now on the flip side, when we log in as the admin who happens to be, uh, John Doe, so let me make sure I have the right link here. So let's go back to my application and log in as the admin from here. And we're going to log in as John Doe at admincompany.com. Uh, and upon logging in, just a simple dashboard, nothing fancy really. I have a very simple search form so I can pull up you know, total articles and views by month. So every single month as the admin level user, I can see all of our articles in aggregate in terms of views. So we've had 82 views across all the articles and we have um, a total of four articles published for the month of April. And then you can see the trend is going up, which is a good sign. We're publishing more articles and therefore we get more views. I can also see top performing articles, which ones get the most views. Okay. 
and I can see how many of our employees or tech writers in this case are publishing their articles. Okay, so who is contributing the most to the knowledge base? All right, let me know if you have any questions on the demo. And then I have set up a uh, website here um, for all the pages where we're going to deploy today's application that we're developing, uh, where we log in as a tech writer. We have add new article, we have manage articles, and then we can also log in as the admin. You can see they're all blank, but we're going to be populating that with Caspio data pages throughout today's class. So I'm anticipating no more than one hour for all the content development because it is 15 data pages. And a lot of what I'll be doing is just duplicating my data pages and making tweaks to them. Um, and that really is the fastest way of building the application. All right, I'll give you just a few more seconds to see if you're typing. And if not, we will dive into it and learn how to develop this entire application today. Let's close that. All right, so let's begin. I have my two knowledge base applications here. So this is the one that I just demoed. You can see it has 15 data pages, and this is a copy of that one. And the only thing I have inside this application are the tables, the four tables that we'll be using. So let's go inside the app. Let's go to our tables and let's quickly review the table. Uh, the very first one I have is a simple lookup table that's going to list all the uh, categories that I have. Okay, nothing uh, interesting happening here. It's just a lookup table that we'll use in the dropdowns. Uh, then we have, I would consider this to be the main table, the one that's going to store all the article information. So if I click on design, we have the article ID, which is the unique key. We have the title. Obviously, uh, article itself needs to be text 64,000 because there's going to be a lot of text uh, and a lot of reading. Then we need to specify the category for that article. Submitted by ID, we need to know which tech writer submitted the article. So we have to associate our articles back to our users. Date created, article status, simple yes or no, and view count, uh, which will give us the page increment. So every time somebody looks at the details of the article, uh, we basically say plus one, it's been viewed, and we continue to add. The more people look at that article, uh, it's going to get, get us a different total because it's always going to be adding plus one. And for metrics, we want to be able to see uh, how many times each article has been viewed. So that's the articles table. Then we have the comments table, which is linked to my articles table. So if I click on design, you will see I have the unique ID, comment ID. Uh, did you find the article helpful? Yes or no? The comment itself, date submitted, and the AID, which is the article ID. And this is going to be the child table to the article table because one article can have many comments. And finally, we have the user table. So notice uh, one field that's missing in my user table is the user ID. I'm going to convert this table into a directory. And when you do that, then it automatically creates the ID for you inside this table. I also don't have the um, employee status, which I typically add to my table to make the employees active or inactive. That's also handled by the directory itself. So that's going to be my very first step. We're going to just simply convert this table into a directory. But before I do, you can see I have first name, last name. I've taught you guys before, if you have a full name, which concatenates the first and last name together into its own field, uh, I recommend that you set it up this way. Right, so we have the first name, and then you create the space between the last name. You add these fields as parameters, and then you simply use the cast function, and you convert that as varchar. So it accepts any type of character, and then we can reuse that name in charts and other places, places in our application. Okay, so let's convert this table into a directory. So up here, directories. Uh, create the directory, and then we're going to convert an existing table. Um, KB. So the prefix is KB. Let me see if this is the one. Yeah. So this is my table, KB MP TBL users live. And then the email, we're going to map out to the email field. I have this field in my table. We're going to create a brand new user ID inside that table. So you can see how directory does that for me. Uh, then we're going to map out the first name to first name, last name to last name, and password to the password field and activate the users. Now I have some sample users inside that table that I've already created. You're going to see them here. We have Kelly, Ned, and Roy. Uh, let me just see if it's going to show me who's who. Yeah, so you can see I have a role field in that table. Two of my employees are tech writers, and one employee is the admin. So the person in the middle is the admin, that's me. And then we have Kelly and Roy who are our tech writers. 
Now, in order for me to properly active and not password expired, so just give me a second. I'm going to activate or reset the password for Ned. And I'm just going to create test one, two, three exclamation. And I don't want to uh, enforce for them to change the password the first time they sign in. Okay, reset the password. And we're going to use one tech writer. So let's go with Kelly. And we're going to open that up and reset the password and generate password. I'll use the same password test one, two, three exclamation and reset. So now when I build my data pages and I deploy my data pages, I can log in as both of my active users. Okay. So my directory is set up. What's going to happen now to my other table, if we go back to our applications and let's find my knowledge base app, here it is. Let's go into our table. You will see how we added that user ID field. Okay, it's been added to my table. I always like to position that field at the very top. That's my primary key. And now every single user in this table will be identified based on that unique ID. Let me save my table. The next step is to link all the tables using relationships. Very good to be able to see the schema and understand how all of your tables are linking back and forth using primary keys and foreign keys. So in the relationship screen, <clears throat> all right, so these are my four tables. Okay, so we just have to link them together using the primary keys and foreign keys. So here's my articles table so that you can see the full title. Here's my simple lookup table. I don't need this table here. We can remove that. So how do we link this together? So we know that each user can have many articles, each tech writer. So we link the user ID to submitted by ID. This is my foreign key inside the articles table. So we let go. I want to display the full name and use that display value on the data page. Okay, and a simple illustration will let you know here that one user can have many articles. We also know that one article can have many comments. So you link the AID to AID to this table. And I always like to display some bit of information from my parent table into my child table, just in case I want to display that as a value on the data page. So we're going to hit create. So that's it. Very simple setup for that whole entire application, right? Uh, one more time, we have tech writers and we have admins inside this table. If a tech writer submits an article, we stamp the tech writer's ID in this table. When somebody leaves a feedback for our comment for the article, we need to know for what article they left the feedback for. So we stamp the AID into the uh, comments form. All right, we're going to save that layout and let's go down to views. Now with the views, because my directory, my table has a role field, we have tech writers and we have admins. I have to separate them into views. So we're going to set up my first view here and we're going to say simple uh, KB for knowledge base filter active admin. Let's start with the admin from the user table. And inside a criteria tab, you're going to simply say move the field widget and then just select the role field. And I want this to equal to admin. That's why when you open up the view, you're only going to be able to see me. I'm the only admin in that table, so it's just going to filter me out. So if I hit finish here and save and open up the view, you will see just myself. Let's set up our second view. So we're going to call this KB filter active tech writers. Okay, user table to the right. And the role. Um, I actually forgot what I'm calling that role. Let me just open up my user table really quickly. Is it tech writer? Yeah, it's just tech writer. Okay. So that needs to equal to tech writer role. We're going to hit finish. And now we're going to be able to see two. We have Roy and we have, I think, Kelly. Yeah. So those are my two views that we have set up to filter based on the uh, directory table, based on the role field. Okay, the last step to what I call the foundation in Caspio is to set up our authentications. So let's do that very quickly as well. And we're going to start off with the view that's filtering active admin. We're going to use custom setup option. And I want to link to my directory. Okay which is the one that we just created a few minutes ago that has all of my users listed. Um, and then underneath that, we can just expand the advanced settings. And I always like to check this box here to auto redirect the directory's login screen. So when you load the web page, 
Uh, the only thing you're going to see on that web page is the login interface with a gray background. So it's automatically redirecting you to the directory's login screen before you can see any of the data pages. So let's hit create and let's call this KB admin login. Hopefully, I don't already use that name somewhere else. Okay, good. And one last one is for the tech writer, also using directory and expand this section down below. Click on that, hit create, and we're gonna call this KB Tech Writer Login. Okay, all done. So now we can begin building all of our data pages, all 15 of them. Let me see how I'm doing on time. I got 45 minutes, so let's see how we do. Um, let's begin by creating this very simple search form at the top that allows us to filter, oops, I am on the wrong page. Knowledge base here. So this is the kb.html page. I want the search form and I want to see the results directly underneath. Usually when I build my applications, I always tend to lean into building public facing data pages because they're visible right away. Um, and then I'll slowly uh, move into my password protected data pages. Okay, so let's create our folders first. So we need public facing data pages. We want data pages for the admin level user and we want a folder for our tech writers because each will have its own unique data pages. In the public folder, we're gonna set up that search form. Now, I've opted out to separate my search and the results into two different data pages. The search form will actually be a submission form. If you didn't know that in Caspi, you can turn a submission form into a search form rather than having a tabular report that contains the search and results together. Um, the reason why I did that was so that I can have this kind of like a nicer looking um, look and feel to my application. You know, if I had used the search and results combined, then everything that you see here would be inside a single container with a white background. But I'm separating my search and results this way. Uh, now that I think about it, it would have been much easier just to combine it all together, but it's up to you. Uh, you decide how you want to create the search and results interface. But for me, I'm going to build it into a submission form and I'm going to use any table, really. I'm going to use the, uh, in this case, I'll use my articles table so I can grab my fields and then I need to remove my fields because I need to use the virtual fields. So we'll select that table. Let's call this search form. And I've already predefined my style in advance that I can use. So we have, uh, we'll be using, which one do I want? This one here. So this is the style that I'll be using along with the other one, um, which has been predefined in advance. Uh, so it looks and feels like it's part of my own web template that I have uh, picked out. And then English localization and no need to restrict access. So let's continue. Uh, my search fields are gonna be we have the title and we have the category. So we're gonna pick the title field and we're gonna pick the category field as our search fields. Now I'm not gonna use the actual fields because this is a submission form. If I do that, it's gonna submit data to my table. Uh, instead, what you wanna do is just grab virtual fields. Virtual fields don't submit anything into your table, okay? They're just used to, to send a parameter and be able to pull data from that table based on the uh, value that you passed. So the first virtual field, I'm actually going to use the title field for that. Okay, but I only put the label here so I remember that it's the title field. But what I'll do is in the advanced tab, I will just simply say search title. Okay, and then we're gonna say no label. Continue next element on the same line because I want the second virtual field to be on the same line as my title field. Okay, is that what I use the label search title or just search? Yeah, let's just call it search, it's cleaner. Okay. And then in the standard tab, maybe you make that field a little bit wider. Let's give it 700 pixels, okay? So it's a bit of a wider field because the title could be longer. Uh, let's see, anything else? No, I think we're good for now. Oh, actually we do need to pass the, the value. So we're gonna pass the lowercase t and I also want to receive lowercase t. I'll tell you why in just a second. Right, so when you submit something in that search form and you click search, Okay, we're passing this parameter to the results page and that's how the results page knows to pull that title. Okay, so you pass this field value as a parameter to the results page and you also receive the value as a parameter because I wanna save whatever I search for, I wanna save it in the search field. So to give you an example, let's say I'm searching for uh, CON, 
You see how it stays here inside the search field without it clearing? And it's up to you. If you want this to clear automatically, you can just remove this one here. But I always like to keep it in there and just modify it as I need to. Okay, so the second one is going to be for category. But I don't need the placeholder here for category. We're just going to say no label. And in the standard tab, we're going to create this to be a drop down. And in the drop down, we can say any category, because that's going to be my label. Delete the value, because you're not looking for that. And then we do both custom values and lookup table. And for the lookup table, it's going to be the categories one that we have. And I always like to sort based on none. So the way it's sorted in my table is the way I would like it to be visible in my application as well. So that's going to be none. Okay, so now my search fields are title and category, and I want to put my filter button next to my category field. So in my live example, you can see how I have the filter button next to my category field. So what I will do is I will add an HTML block, put that underneath virtual one, and I will just say here, continue next element on the same line. And in, now inside my HTML block, I'm not going to code this out. I'm just going to paste what I have here in my notepad to put the, uh, the search button side by side, I add a little bit of style to hide the main button that's, that comes by default from the data page, and then I create my own button. And when I say continue next element on the same line, it's basically put in this button on the same line as my category field. We have a, a how-to tutorial on how to do that. It's very simple. I just copied and paste. And now that we have all of our fields, we can just remove them from here. Let's go to the next screen and just say, same form. So the search form is just going to reload. We'll hit finish. And here's my very first data page. Let's deploy it. Let's grab the embed code. And we're going to use Notepad++. So here is my placeholder text. And we're going to paste our Caspio code. And let's publish it. Reload. And here is kb.html. All right, so if all went well, we should be able to now see that live. And there is my search interface. We have the search form, we have the category, and we can filter all side by side. Next thing that we need to display are the results. OK, so let's build that data page as well. We're going to go with the list view. Now, you could also use tabular if you wanted to, but I'll go with list view because it's easier to read text if you have long text um, than the tabular format. Let's hit next and choose our table. This time we need to have the articles table because obviously that's where all of our data resides. Let's call this um, view articles maybe. We'll use the same style that I used before and same localization of English and hit next. Now I do need to filter my data based on a predefined criteria. I already have my search form created so there's no really need for me to create the search form. I need to do a predefined so that we can receive that lowercase t and lowercase c in order to filter the articles that are submitted from that search form. So we will hit next. And then what we'll do is simply receive those two fields, the title and category. Those are my two filtering fields. We're going to hit next. And we just have to set up the advanced tab in order to receive that properly. So for my title field in the advanced tab, we're going to say receive value externally. And the parameter name was lowercase t. Definitely leave this radio button selected if empty, ignore criteria, which means if you leave this empty and you hit filter, it's going to ignore that criteria and return all the re uh, records on the results page. Uh, same thing with category. Let's do that. External parameter, lowercase c. And then in the standard tab, we want this to be contains for both of these. Contains, why? Because um, I want to have a partial keyword search capability here. So if I type in letter A and click search, it's going to return all the titles that contain letter A. If I left this as equal, okay, then I would have to know the exact title that I'm looking for in order to find that result. Okay, so this is much better in this, in this case to set it up that way. We're going to hit next. And uh, let's see, what do I want on my results page? Well, we could have the title field, category, submitted by and hit next. Uh, definitely don't allow public to edit your data. This is public facing. So you don't want somebody to be able to delete your articles. We're going to hit next. And now I could leave my results page the way it is. But as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of using HTML and CSS to make things look a little bit nicer. 
So I'm just going to add my HTML block. Uh, I will disable my toolbar. And now whatever code you put in here, you can style the way your data is presented on the results page by adding your fields as parameters and wrapping your fields with some HTML and simple CSS uh, tags. Now I will just copy and paste what I have here on the side and I will explain. By the way, this is all going to be available for you as a download. So you don't have to worry about not knowing how to code this, but let me explain. Uh, we use the div to simply create the object where we want to place our content. And in the very first div that I have, you can see I'm using a link. So this is a redirect link to this page where I pass the article ID. And the title field simply becomes clickable. You can see how I'm wrapping my title field with the A tag for Ahref. Okay, so the title will be displayed, but it's going to be clickable. When I click on the title, it's going to take me to this page where I need to see the article details and for somebody to leave a comment. And in the process, you pass the article ID. Why do we pass the article ID? Well, when you submit the comment, we need to stamp the article ID into the comments table. And all the second div has for me is simply showing the category and it's written by that specific user from my table. Okay, very simple, nothing uh, too complicated here. Once you have all this information in here, you no longer really need these fields on the results page, so you can remove them. If that's just going to be redundant. You're going to be duplicating your data. We're going to hit next. Uh, yeah, let's show 24 per page. At the moment, I don't have any articles in my table. We're going to disable the details page and hit finish. And let's deploy that data page by grabbing the deploy code. And inside my notepad plus plus, we have public article details. Um, sorry, KB page. This is my results right here. Okay, let's save. And let's test this out. I need to publish it first. Let's not forget. So let's move the KB page one more time. Now, again, I don't have any data, so you're going to see no records found. That makes sense because there are no articles currently populated inside my application. Now, if we wanted to see the articles visible here. I could go to my table and add it manually, but why don't we actually now set up a login interface uh, for the tech writer to be able to submit an article. I think that makes the most sense so that later you can come back to this page and see the article. So we're going to now set up a completely different data page. Um, let's set up a new one here. Submission form. We're going to hit next based off of the articles table. And let's call this add new article or create new article. And the data page that I'm going to use is this one here. My localization is English, restrict access to our tech writer. Okay. Remember, we set up that authentication at the very beginning of our class today. So we need to pass or protect that data page with this authentication. We're going to hit next. Uh, for now, let's see what fields that we want. We need to create the title, article itself, category. Submitted by ID, date created, and article status. A view count you don't need to have on your form. Okay, so title field can be a required field. Article is going to be a text area, but in the advanced tab, I'm going to enable rich text editing and use standard. You can also do um, simple or advanced. It's up to you. But the reason why I, why I convert my text area to more of a rich text editing is because an article, you know, you want to give your tech writers the ability to add images, uh, bullets and just make that article look visually appealing because if it's just a plain text area there's no formatting around that it's just going to be text and it might not be interesting for the reader to read just plain text um, then we have category so as the tech writer I can say drop down uh, we'll do both and we can say select category make sure you delete the value and then the lookup table we have the lookup table of categories and by the way, these fields can be required if needed. And typically they would be required. So you have to put something in there. And then submitted by ID. I'm already logged in as the tech writer in this case. Um, I don't need to see a drop down here. We can just hide that field and stamp the user's ID using the authentication method. So now each time a tech writer submits the form, we are automatically stamping that user's ID into the articles table. And that's how we know which tech writer is publishing these articles. The uh, date created can be a timestamp and article status. Uh, I always like to put display text here and say something like this, check to publish article. 
So this text is going to appear after the checkbox. And I don't really need to have a label because this is clear enough what that checkbox is going to do. It just says check to publish the article. And we're done, just click finish. And now let's go to deploy that data page by grabbing our embed code, copying it. I'm realizing now that um, we'll see how many data pages we can build in the remaining 30 minutes. I know that I'm going to exceed that time frame by a little bit, but I'm realizing that as I'm explaining things, obviously it's taken a lot longer to, to build this out. If I wasn't talking, then I could build that very quickly. I'd probably be halfway done by now. But anyway, so let's go into that web page where we have um, TW stands for Tech Writer, and then we have New Article. So we're going to paste that deploy code here. Copy, paste, and then let's just move that page to the web. TW, new article. And let's go and see if it's available for me to look at. So we're going to sign in as the tech writer. New article, and immediately I should be able to see the login screen here, and I do. So who is my uh, Kelly? I believe Lee is the one at uh, company.com. I hope my memory is still good. Let's see. Uh, let me make sure I put the right password. Test one, two, three, exclamation. I think we have success. Perfect. So now that I'm logged in as Kelly, I can submit this form very quickly. So why don't we grab an article from, um, from Caspio's How To, just so that we can have something formatted nicely. So let's go to Apps, App Overview. Okay, perfect. So we'll do this. We'll call this App Overview. And then I'll just grab this text. I don't know if it's going to grab the image for me, but we have some bullet points here. Paste. Oh, I did grab the image. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so we'll do that. And then category can be how to guides and publish the article. So it's visible on the front end. Oh, there's one thing that I forgot for the, for the results page. Yeah, you bet. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate the feedback. So we'll hit submit. All right. Our submission was successful. That means on the front end, I don't know if I'll be able to see because I think I need to. Yeah, I do see it, but I do need to make one tweak to my article. Okay, to this uh, to this data page here. So the tweak that I need to make. So results view articles is I need to include as the filtering field my article status because the article status needs to be checked. Right, only show the ones that are published or checked in the database. If it's unchecked, I don't want that article to be visible. All right, so we have full control in terms of what the tech writer can do. If I want to publish that, I can, or I can save it for later and publish it at that time. Okay, so let's see. Okay, perfect. So there is my article that we now have visible on the front end for the public view. And then if I click on the details, now we need to build out the remaining data pages for this page called public article details. So the first thing we'll build is the details page. So that's going to be here on the public side, create data page, details view, based off of the articles table, and let's call this view details. Again, I'll use the same style as before, same localization as before, and no need to restrict access, it's a public facing data page. We're going to filter that data page based on the AID, so we're passing the article ID, as you can see here in my example. I passed the article ID. My details page needs to receive the article ID in order to filter out the information for that article. So, AID. In the advanced tab, we're going to receive it externally. Well, you don't have to change uppercase to lowercase. It's all fine. Here, value is going to be required, right? In order for me to see the details of that article, value must be passed in the URL to properly filter out that article information. And then in the details view, now you can decide what information you want to display. So I know we're going to need title. Uh, we're going to need the article itself. Uh, maybe you want to display category. You can choose if you want to say uh, submitted by, you can. Uh, you can have date created. Uh, view count definitely needs to be in there. So let's hit next. For view count, what you need to do is just say page view increment. This is built into Caspio which means that each time somebody looks at that details page, it's going to create one increment, plus one. It's going to add plus one in your table. And these are all going to be display only, right? I don't want nobody to be able to edit this information. It's all going to be display only. Um, if you would like to have uh, maybe a button that takes the user back to the search form, 
we can add a header and footer. And in the header section, let's disable the toolbar. And I have my button that I created here that I'm going to use. So I'm going to paste this here. It's not really a button. It's an href link, which is a hyperlink to take me back to the previous page. Uh, you can see back to search. And it's taking me back to kb.html. And the style that you see, the CSS that you see, is just styling the hyperlink to look like a button. And let's, why don't we just add maybe even a simple heading here. So why don't we say article details, highlight it, put it in bold, and I think that's good enough. All right, let's try it out. Let's hit finish and save. And we'll take, uh, did it not save? What happened? Oh, where's my data page? Did it save it somewhere else? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what happened just now. I don't see my article details. So let me quickly build it out. That's interesting. Okay, let's try that one more time. I don't know what happened there. Maybe my session was timed out. I apologize for that. Let me build that very, very quickly here. Article details. Uh, I have my style, localization, next, filter, next, AID, next. Sorry about that. I don't exactly know what happened. Value required. And then we're going to include title, article, category, be created, and view count. And then for view count, we'll say page increment. Everything else. Okay, so we'll add our header and footer. And in the header section, we'll paste that hyperlink and above the title field. Anyway, this is how I normally build <laughs> applications this, this speed. But uh, let me just click finish and hopefully. Okay, now I have, but it's in the wrong folder. So I just need to move that outside the admin folder and place it in my public folder. That's better. Okay, let's deploy it. Grab our snippet of code. And inside the public article details. Here it is. Here's my details placeholder. Paste. And let's push it live. Public article details. Let's see. Perfect. Ooh, one thing that I forgot was to render. You see how it's coming out as code? I need to render that as HTML uh, for the front end. So one thing that I forgot to do in my details page is for my article field, See, article field, I want to render that as HTML and just enable all the tags. Don't worry about the warning. It's not really going to have any malicious harm to your data or applications. Um, certain HTML tags can be used maliciously, but that's somebody who can, on the front end, who can inspect your tool and maybe uh, find a way to modify it. But, I mean, I've never had any issue with that myself. This is just a precaution for you. Uh, let's hit finish. And now when I reload my page you will see it nicely formatted, okay? So that's my article, and now we need to build a form for our user to be able to, you know, say how they feel about this article above. So let's build that data page next. Also for the public, create data page based off of the comments table now. So let's call this um, uh, add feedback, maybe. I will use the same style. Or same localization. Hit next. Uh, by the way, it doesn't need to be password protected because, again, it's a public facing form. I need all my fields in the form, so let's move them all to the right. And the first thing that you see is helpful, so you can turn this into a radio button if you'd like, and you can say yes or no. Very simple. Okay, I want uh, multiple options per line. Yeah, multiple options per line. So both the radio uh, buttons appear on the same row. The comments is going to be a text area. Date submitted is going to be a timestamp. And AID needs to be received on this form. And the way you're going to receive that information, it's going to be a text field. Okay, let's just leave it as a text field in the advanced tab. Receive the value externally. And the parameter name is going to be AID. Because when you click on the article title from the results page, you pass the article ID to the details page. Now my submission form can receive that article ID. Now I know I left it as a text field, um, but that's going to make the, the ID exposed. It's going to be visible. What you want to do is simply hide that field, make it hidden. Okay, that way the end user doesn't tamper with that information. 
And then finally here on the display, we're gonna just reload the form if you want to, or you can have a confirmation message. You can say something like, uh, thank you for your feedback. And hit finish. Oh, sorry, one thing that I forgot about the form is some conditional logic that I need to put in. So give me a second. The conditional logic is like this. If you look at the live example, you see how we only see the radio buttons initially, but then when you click on the radio button, we can show and hide that text area. And that's kind of the behavior that I want to have. So using the rules tab, we're going to create a simple rule based on the helpful field, which is the radio button. So if this is blank, so if nothing has been selected, so if both of the radio buttons are blank, go ahead and hide the comments field. And that's all I needed to do. All right, let's deploy it. We'll grab our snippet of code and you can see how it's all coming together very rapidly. <laughs> uh, there's my comment form. We're going to paste and push that page live. And I should be able to see that form. So of course you can modify the label if you want to say, did you find this uh, article helpful? You know, instead of just helpful. And then you can say yes or no. If you say any one of those options, then you provide your comment. And there's a hidden field here that we're hiding that's receiving this article ID. And upon submission, we are stamping that article ID into the comments table. And that's how you're able to associate the comments back to your articles. Okay. Little trick I'm going to show you here. If you ever find yourself with no spacing between the radio button and the label, the way you see it here, let's edit that form really quick. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit so it looks presentable. So as I was saying, helpful, instead of just this being the label, you can say, did you find the article helpful? And I want that label to be above my radio buttons. It's going to look cleaner that way. And now to create the space, just put in ampersand MBSP semicolon. Okay, I'm going to copy that. Make sure you delete that from the value because you don't want this to be stored in your table. It only needs to be over here under display. This just creates an extra space for your radio button. It's not going to be visible, but you'll see what happens when I click finish and refresh. Okay, so now it looks much cleaner. You can see that little space in between the, uh, the label and the radio button. And then you can also now provide your comment depending on how you felt about the article. Okay, and we're done with all of the... Um, with all of the public facing data pages. And we also have one for tech writers. So if I go back as a tech writer, we have the ability to obviously um, to create the article. Yeah, always try to add some new tips, you know, in, into these live streams so that you can learn something, at least something new. All right, manage articles. So let's build that data page for the tech writers. So reports, let's go into tabular format. We're going to hit next. Let me see what I'm doing in my live example so I can at least copy it as much as I can. Oh, I have to sign out because I'm logged in as the, um, I believe I'm still logged in as the admin here. Let me see. It might be a directory thing. Yeah, so let me sign out. Let's go back into my live example. Log in as the tech writer. Who was my tech writer? Sally Lee, I believe, at uh, company.com. Let's log in. And I apologize if today's live stream is a little hectic. There's a lot going on. Um, I understand it's a very fa fast-paced demo. I'm trying to squeeze a lot of data pages in a short amount of time. But the good news is, like I said at the beginning, the video will be available on our YouTube, and then you can follow along at your own pace uh, later on. Okay. So we have four different search fields. Let's build this data page out based on the articles table. We're going to call this uh, manage articles. Uh, I'm going to use the same style, same localization. And we definitely have to restrict access based on the tech writer. We're going to hit next. So now I can have the search form. I want the results underneath and I want to uh, display the results on the initial load. Record level security is important here because I need my uh, tech writers to only see their own articles. I don't, as, as Ke Kelly, I don't want to be able to see somebody else's articles that they're publishing. So record level security is needed here. 
So we can search based on title. Uh, what else we have? Title, uh, date, and status. So we have the date field and status, our article status. We hit next. So I'm not going to spend too much time modifying uh, the look and feel. I'm just going to use for title, I'll use contains. Date created, we're going to create two additional criteria here. So we can do a date range. So set the operator to end. Criteria one is going to be greater than or equal to. And in your label, you can say maybe from, so it's clear. And then criteria two is going to be less than or equal to. This so is how in Caspio we create a date range. So I want to search from that date. To this date and then for article status by default i always like to have any selected because i want to display both published and unpublished articles in my results page but you could get fancy here if you like to say something else other than yes or no you can say published you can say unpublished but it's still going to have a value of yes or no this is just for display for you to see what it looks like on the search form. All right, then on the results page. So what information are we displaying here? We have the title, category, date created, and status. So we have title, date created, category, and status. Okay, do I have any editing capability for tech writers? Not on this page, but I believe I have editing capability on the details page. And I do. So let's come back here. So I'll hit next. Now the title field, uh, as you notice here, if I go back, the title field is not an actual field. It's, I'm using an HTML block, just like what we did before to redirect the user to the, uh, to the appropriate page. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is simply add an HTML block, and then we're gonna just disable the HTML editor, and we're gonna create a simple hyperlink, href. What is the destination page? Let me take a look really quickly. The destination page is TW article details. So TW article details dot HTML. And again, we're going to pass the article ID to the details page. All right. And then no need to get creative or fancy here to style it. You can if you want to. I'm just going to list my title to be clickable and we're going to close the A tag. And that's it. And now that I have the title field here, I can just remove the field from this results page on the left. And now we have date created, category, and article status. For article status, you can format this instead of just being a simple yes or no, you can do a custom format. So if it's yes, I want to be published. And if it's no, unpublished. And then let's just add a color. Maybe if it's published, maybe a blue. If it's unpublished, red. And hit OK. Let's hit next. Uh, let's display 25 records per page. I only have one article. Let's disable the details page because we're going to create a custom details page and hit finish. All right, deploy it. Grab our snippet and go to our web page, TW article details and paste. And let's go live. So TW article details. And we're going to come back here and manage articles. TW. Oh, I put it in the wrong page. I'm sorry. Let me come back here to my page. It's not article details. Ned, <laughs> it's a different page. It's called TW manage articles. So here's where we deploy our page. And now let's push this page live, TW manage articles. And now it should work. I think it's going to ask me to maybe, okay, here we are. So remember, we added this article earlier in today's live stream. Uh, now I have these filtering capability and I can click on this page. And when I click on it, it's taking me to this page where it's supposed to take me to. Yeah. So I need to go ahead and override this one because this is the previously one that I published. So it still has that results page, even though it's not supposed to. Let me just fix that. So it's not confusing. Uh, let me move the uh, TW article details and refresh. And now you will see it's just details. So we go from manage articles, okay, TW manage articles. So when I click on the app overview, we're going to pass the article ID. And on this page, I now once again need to create my details page and I need to be able to view feedback that came in for that article. So let's do that very quickly. Once again, under tech, uh, tech writers. So details page. 
article data source and then we're going to call this article details and the style is going to be again same style localization english restrict access to our tw tech writers hit next filter data no need to, no need for rls because it's going to just simply display data for that article once you pass the id um, so we need to filter based on the id and again it's all more or less the same setup you're going to just receive aid and value must be required hit next and now we want the ability to edit the title article category um, do i want to be able to see the number of views this article has here sure we can do that let's also include date created article status and view count yeah so the view count we can put at the very top of the article okay the title should be modifiable so we can make this a text area the article itself also, we need to turn this into a text area. Don't forget in the advanced tab to enable rich text editing. Okay, um, let's come back to the standard tab. Uh, for category, that's gonna be a drop down, and then we can look up a table here for categories. Okay, display none. And date created. I don't need to edit my date created, but because it's display only, why don't we move that at the very top? And then for article views, we can also, or article status, I apologize. That's going to be a checkbox. And then we can say, once again, check to publish article. And we can say no label. And let's see, anything that I want to present here? Not really. I don't want to navigate to the next, next record. Let's keep that the way it is. And you can say you have successfully updated your article. You can update that however you want. We're going to hit finish. And let's deploy that data page. Copy it. Come back here to our article details now. So this is the correct page now. We're going to paste our Caspio deploy code, save and publish. Okay, so if all goes well, I should be able to see the details of that article. And now as a tech writer, I have full ability to edit and I can choose to unpublish that article. If I uncheck this box and hit update, um, this article will no longer be visible for the public to consume. Okay. Now I need to be able to see the feedback that came in for this specific article. So let's build that data page. Let's just do a simple tabular report and we're going to build that on top of the comments table, view feedback or comments, restrict access to our tech writer, and we're going to select our style and localization English, hit next. Filter data, once again, and we want to filter based on the AID. In order for me to see the comments or feedback that belong to that article, I need to obviously filter all of those comments based on the article ID. So again, it's all of it, always more or less the same setup. You receive the value, AID, value required, hit next. And now what information do you want to display for that specific article. So let's just say we want to know if they found the article helpful. We want to read the comment and date submitted. We're going to hit next. No need to edit that information. We're going to keep everything read only the way it is. We're going to display 25 and I want to show the most recent first. All right? So as the feedback comes in for that article from the end user, I want to be able to see what people are saying, but I want to be able to see uh, order them from mo most recent first. And our details page, click finish. Let's deploy it, grab our embed code, and that's gonna go directly underneath here, and let's publish it. All right, I think it's gonna say no records found because we don't have any feedback submitted, but if we go back to the home page, we go back to our knowledge base, there's the article, and let's just say I did not find that helpful, it's uh, outdated. All right, we're gonna hit submit. Thank you for your feedback. If I now go back in as the tech writer and we go into the details of that article, I should be able to see that comment come in. Okay. You can also enable emails here too to automatically send emails to the tech writer so they're notified the new feedback came in. Okay. And believe it or not, we are actually all done with the tech writers. So now we're gonna work on the admin side. So let me sign out. <clears throat> we have 
seven more data pages to build. Okay, so let's log in as the admin now in my live example so that we can kind of uh, copy what I did before. Uh, let me come back to my app examples, KB homepage, log in as the admin. It does this to me because I have all the users in the same directory. Um, so I know why that's happening. That's actually the correct workflow, but I'm trying to sign out. Okay, there we go. So now let me go back to my application. For security, that is the right workflow, right? You have to log, because all the users are in the same directory. Right, so I can't log in as an admin if I'm already logged in as uh, a tech writer. So you have to log out, but obviously your tech writer and your admin are not going to be on the same computer working on this application. They're going to be on separate stations. So let's sign in as the admin now. And my admin, I believe I have myself listed as the admin for this application. I always get confused after a while. Wait, I don't think it's... Is it me? No, it's not me. Sorry. Too many users. I am uh, forgetting. So, okay, let's go into my original directory. And who is my admin? John Doe. I believe John Doe is my admin. Yeah, John Doe is my admin. So let's come back here. Switch user. John Doe at company.com. And we are in. So again, we want to build a search form here at the very top. And then we have three different charts. So let's speed through it. So the search form, once again, is going to be a submission form, just like what we did before. Okay. Can I make a copy of the current one that I have and just modify it? Uh, yes, I can, actually. So let's cancel out of that because it's built on and pulling data from the articles table. So yeah, why don't we do that? Let's go to the public, make a copy of the search form. So let's duplicate it. And let's move the copied one into the admin folder. Okay, just to save ourselves some time. We're going to hit edit. Uh, it's still a submission form. This is all the same. I'm just going to modify my label. And I need the ability to search based on any title, tech writer, category, and date range. Okay, well, this is going to be a bit of a setup here. So we have title, submitted by, category, and date range. I need to include these fields because it's easier for me uh, to remember them because now I need to create my, uh, my virtual fields. We already have title. I'm just going to change the width to maybe 150 pixels because now I need to fit more fields in the same row. This HTML block is going to be at the very bottom, and I need to add virtual field for my... Uh, date range, I will need two of those, but date range, and we need one for submitted by ID, so one more virtual field. So like I was saying, we have the title field that's already set up the way it was. We have the category field that's already set up the way it was, except for, I did not pass, this was my category field, I'm supposed to be passing and receiving letter C, so. That needs to be in place here as well. Now, these two, we're going to use these for our date fields. Okay, so again, we're going to set the uh, width maybe to 150 pixels so it fits in the same row. Uh, for my placeholder, we're going to say date from. Okay, that's going to be my placeholder. And I'm just going to say no label and pass DF, which is the value that I'm going to be passing and receiving, which stands for date from. You can call that whatever you want. So that's my date field, and I want to continue the next element on the same line. So this is going to be date two. So date two. Also, no label, because I have the label here inside the placeholder. And we're going to say DT, which stands for D, uh, date two. And DT, day two. All right. So those are my, that's my date range. That's done. Uh, let's now say continue next element on the same line. And the final one here is submitted by ID. And for this one here, we're going to say uh, drop down, both, search any. And then lookup table is going to be off of the users table so that we can pull up the list of our 
employee names and the field for value is going to be the user ID. And let's see, in the advanced tab, we're going to pass, uh, let's see, what do I want to pass this value as? So maybe just user, let's just call it user. And user. Okay. And let's put the button next to that virtual field and we'll just say continue next element on the same line and no need for a label. And let's just change the width to 150 pixels. So it all fits nicely in the same row. Let me make sure all of them have the same width, 150 pixels, 150 pixels. Um, category, I'm also gonna change that to 150 pixels and for my title, 150 pixels. Okay, that's good. And now we can remove the rest of these fields. Sorry, I know it's, um, it, it looks complicated, but it's really not. It just takes a little bit of practice and patience to set it up correctly. And now that we have it set up correctly, we can just save our changes. And hopefully it looks good. Let's see, we're gonna deploy that, copy. And in my Notepad++, we have the admin dashboard. You can see I have to deploy a few data pages here. So here's my search form. We're gonna paste that. Let me push this live to see what it looks like. Admin dashboard. Okay, so let's cross our fingers that it looks okay. Let me just find my page. Okay, so we're gonna log in as the admin. Who is my admin? That's a good question. I think I have myself listed as the admin, company.com. We're gonna log in. It always does this for me. Um, let me think for a second, how do I wanna get out of here? So, cause I'm logged in as the tech writer. Give me a second. Uh, let me think, sumapp.com np um, kb np live uh, I apologize give me a second sometimes it can get a little confusing somehow.com np kb np live um, admin dashboard okay so here we are so you can see that um, I don't like the style. I'm actually supposed to be using a different style for this data page. So let me edit my form and choose this style. And we'll refresh the page now. Okay, that's better. So now we have all of our fields in the same row and the data pages underneath that will cascade. They'll basically filter based on the input that I provide here. So let me show you a little trick here. So we're gonna build our combination chart first. So let's do a data page or the admin. Uh, we'll do a combination chart. We're gonna hit next based off of the articles table. And uh, let's call this um, combo chart views. And it doesn't matter what name I give it, views and total articles. Articles. So I'm going to use the same style, same localization, restrict access now to the admin login, right? So this is only accessible by the admin level user. Hit next. Uh, we need to filter the chart. Admin doesn't need any RLS enabled because we should be able to see all the data from the table. And now because we're passing all of those values as parameters from the search form, we have to receive all of those values. And you only have to set this up once and then you can copy the chart and apply the same settings to all of the other charts. So we have title, uh, we had category, submitted by ID, and date created. Those are, the, those are our filtering fields. So for title, we have to go to the advanced tab, receive, and we had lowercase t. If empty, ignore criteria, that's correct. And we want to use contains. For category, because category is a dropdown, we're gonna receive this value externally, lowercase c, uh, if empty, ignore criteria, but this, need, this can remain equal because you're not having a text field, it's a dropdown, and you're gonna basically just select something from the dropdown, so it'll equal. Uh, date submitted is also a dropdown, if my memory serves me well, it is. And then we're gonna just receive this. And I think I called my value user. <clears throat> and that's gonna be equal. And then for date created, we once again have to set up a new criteria, set this to and, and then this is gonna be greater than or equal to, 
receive the value. If you remember, I call my value DF. That's DF for date from. Okay, if empty, ignore, ignore criteria, greater than or equal to. This one is going to be less than or equal to. Okay, and my value was called DT, which stands for date two. And that's it. You just have to set this up one time, and then you can copy your data page and make other charts, and it's going to retain the same, preserve the same settings for all the other charts. Okay, so now let me quickly set up my combo chart here. So on the x-axis, we want the date field. We want to group our data based on month. For the first y-axis, I want to display, uh, let's see, we're going to do a count. So I just want to be able to show a count, uh, and I want a line chart for that. And the marker can be maybe this diamond. All right, so we're just counting the number of articles that are in uh, that table by month. That's the first, uh, first y-axis. The second y-axis is going to be, let's add the value here. So for this one, we want total views, so view count. And I want that maybe to be a column, and I want to do a sum. So it totals all the views in that whole entire column for that specific month. So not only do we see how many articles we published that month, but total views across all of those articles. This y-axis is positioned on the left side. This y-axis is positioned on the right side. Okay. Let's finish and deploy. Embed. And let's go to our dashboard. So this is my combination. Paste and publish. And we're almost done, actually, because now I just need to copy my data pages, and that's going to be quick. Now, I don't have a lot of data. Obviously, we only have one article. So the article has been viewed six times, and uh, we only have one article listed uh, in the database. You can change the label to something else inside a legend. It doesn't have to say title. You can say total articles or something like that. All right, let's build the other two very quickly here. So the other one is uh, top performing articles. So here's the trick. You make a copy of this data page. Let's just give it a name. Um, um, rank by total views, something like that. I don't know. I can't think of the article uh, of the chart name at the moment. And for this one, we're going to use a bar chart. Hit next. Don't need to make any changes here. Don't need to make any changes here. This is still the same. All of this is set up for me. I don't need to make any changes. And then uh, for this one here, oh, you can add a uh, x-axis here. That's interesting. So we're going to delete this. We don't need two of them. We don't need another value. And for the chart settings, yeah. So for y-axis, I want to display the title on the y-axis. Uh, no need for the... Wait, I'm confused. Is this still a combination chart? It's a bar chart. Yeah, it's a bar chart. I have the y-axis. So the y-axis needs to have a value. Wait, this is interesting. I've never seen this done before. Like, I can't. Um, y-axis is going to have the title. That's correct. Because it's a bar chart, I want to see the title on the y-axis. But why am I not able to add my... Is it really... Let me see what it looks like. So if I keep the x-axis, and for value, we're going to do a simple... Yeah, I'm not going to do a count or anything. So I want that to be on the view count, but none because it's just going to total, total it for me. And then let's just do next, hit finish, and let me just see what it looks like. Um, that was interesting. Copy. And top performing articles. Save. Move this page to the right. And reload. Okay, so again, I only have one. It's been viewed six times, so that's correct. If you had other articles listed, you'll be able to see them here in the bar chart with the title on the left-hand side. just want to make sure my filtering is working correctly. So if we were to search for something other than app overview, let's say we look for test, 
Right, no records to display. If I search for app, it should still pick it up because it's contains. Okay, good. And the final one is articles by tech writers, which is a very simple pie chart. So let's just make a copy of this one. Duplicate. Um, articles by a tech writer. Save it and edit. So this time we want the pie chart. Next. Yeah, keep the same settings. Everything is the same. Filtering is the same. And then for the pie chart, we want the category to be, I think we're just doing a count, but let's do submitted by ID. So that's the category because we know we have to know which rep is submitting how many articles. And for value, we're going to do it just a simple count. Um, and I don't like to show as percentage. You can if you want to, but we're just going to do a basic count. We're going to hit finish and deploy. Copy. Paste. And let's publish. How are we doing on time? We're 12 minutes over, and but we're almost done. So not too bad. In one hour to create something like this, that's, I would consider that quite an achievement. So there's, again, there's only one article submitted by Kelly Lee. You can see if, if you're, if you had more, if I had more sample data in my application, then you'd be able to see a nice breakdown of pie chart um, based on the um, tech writer that's submitting the, the articles. All right, last, last bit left here is to manage articles for the admin. And we'll be done with today's live stream. I just want to complete everything. So we're going to copy manage articles that are tech writers, see? So we know how to reinvent the wheel here. So we're going to just duplicate that, save, and move that into our admin folder. Okay, edit. Make sure you rename this and make sure you select the right authentication for the admin. And you just want to now set and see what capabilities the admin is going to have compared to the tech writer. One is I don't need to enable record level security because admin needs to see all the articles written by all the tech writers. Okay, so we disable RLS. Uh, perhaps you want to pull up the articles based on the tech writer name. And for that field, uh, we can just say both because under custom values, I want to say search any, delete the value, and then automatically it's linking it to the full name from the user table. Very helpful because sometimes you want to pull up the article by a specific tech writer. In the results page, you might want to now display the tech writer information as well so that you can see who that article belongs to. You may also want to be able to see the view count directly inside the results page. That's, that would be helpful to see as well. Uh, what else? Let me make sure I'm building this correctly. Yeah, it's a tabular format, articles submitted by, yep, good. Categories. I'm just wondering why I didn't include the title field at least in the, oh, because I'm using a clickable link, that's why. So then in the results page, uh, it's, it's still here, you can see, but instead of TW article details, I have this page called admin article details because we don't want to go back to tech writers details page. We want to go to admin article details and that is correct. Admin article details, correct. So we have the view count, we have the submitted by ID, uh, all of that good stuff is in here. And then we're going to hit next. Next, no details page. And we're done. So let's deploy this data page to admin manage articles. So admin manage articles, paste, publish. I just need five more minutes of your time and I promise I will let you go. We're almost done. Okay, manage articles. So here we are. And now I can search based on the employee if I needed to. We have the title, we have the date range. Uh, we have the app overview that's going to take me to the details page. I can see that this article has six views submitted by Kelly Lee. It's published. I can go to details. And the final two data pages left are basically a repeat of what the tech writer sees, article details and view comments. And that's something that we can just quickly duplicate. So article details. Because even the admin uh, should have the ability to edit the article details. 
So we'll edit here. Hit next. Let me just rename my label, change the authentication, uh, filter, filter. All that is good. Uh, maybe as the admin level user, you want to reassign that article to somebody else. So you might have the ability here to have a drop down in the details view and quickly just uh, initially you'll see who the article was written by, but you can reassign that article to somebody else uh, from within that drop down. Might be helpful to have that capability. And of course, as the admin level user, you want the capability to publish or unpublish articles. We're going to hit finish to save. And believe it or not, we have one data page left. We're just going to um, paste this one in the admin article details. And again, um, I've done a session like this before where I do a live build. I challenge myself to see what I can do in one hour. Sometimes it goes well. Sometimes it's a little rough. You know, I felt like today's live stream was a little rough here and there because I was having uh, directory issues because uh, users are in the same directory and I'm using the same tab, same session. Um, it tends to give you that security error that you see in red. Um, but all in all, I know it's, it's fast, it's quick, uh, but you can watch this later on as well uh, at your own pace. So let's go ahead and reload. Admin article details, uh, refresh. Okay, there it is. So now as the admin level user, I can reassign that to somebody else. I can modify that on behalf of the tech writer. And I'm also interested in seeing what comments are coming in or what feedback is coming in. So I will just come back to the tech writer, view feedback, make a copy, save, and move that into our admin folder. So let's edit. Once again, we're going to change the label, change this to the admin login. And maybe the admin has some different capability. Maybe the admin will have the ability to delete comments. You know, same thing with the articles. Maybe the admin level user can delete those uh, articles if you enable inline delete. Right? So all of this is the same. Don't need to make any changes. Click finish. And that's it. Believe it or not, we finished everything in one hour. 15 data pages. That's not bad. Well, a little over an hour. View comments, paste, and publish. There we go. Full application, full knowledge base application built in a little over an hour. Uh, we did have the table set up in advance. Um, I'll be honest, it took me about maybe half a day all in all to build this because there's some HTML and CSS involved and I had to modify my style slightly um, to make it look and feel like it's part of this web template. But that's the speed of building these applications. So if any of your departments have a need for a public facing knowledge base, uh, you will have the video available, the live build of the application. Um, the link to download the app will also be available in the description. So you can just import this app into your account. Don't worry, you're going to get the cleaner one. This is the one that you'll be importing into your account. Um, this one's a little more crude because it was a live build and um, couldn't take that much time to make it look nice. Otherwise, we'll be here for a little bit longer than anticipated. <laughs> uh, thank you, Stability. I appreciate all the, the good feedback that you have. So really, thank you. Thank you so much. And for those of you who stuck around uh, full full hour in, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Thank you for your time today. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or feedback. Um, but this is, again, this is just one use case of what you can develop in Caspio. There are many, many other use cases for different departments, different industries. This is just one of them. Um, tell me if you guys enjoyed the live build. I know it's fast paced and it's hard to keep up because I'm clicking on things much quicker than um, anyone can really follow, especially if you're new to Caspio. But if you enjoyed the live build, if you felt like it was somewhat repetitive, it was eh, not as interesting as what I usually do. Usually I, I give you guys all the files and I kind of walk you through the application as just an overview of the app and I point out some of the more uh, technical aspects of the app. But today I, I was thinking, why don't we try a live build and see how we do? <laughs> Uh, I don't mind the time taken. Okay, good. Good. I appreciate it, Lucas. Thank you.
So we'll kind of go back and forth a little bit. You know, sometimes the live build helps. Sometimes just the, um, the overview of the app is helpful as well. Especially for those advanced Caspio users who after today's sessions might have, might have felt that this was, this was easy, you know, a cakewalk. So uh, that I understand as well. Feels more realistic, plus we can go back and rewatch it. Okay, good. Good, actually, happy to hear. Um, kind of wanted to, to see also how many data pages I can build in the given time that I have. So I think a good number is anywhere from 10 to 15 um, if we maintain the same speed and same pace. Okay. Well, once again, uh, thank you so much for your time. And for those of you who come back to these sessions without you attending, there will be no live stream. So thank you so much. And uh, let me know. I'm always open to ideas and feedback on what you guys would like to see in the live stream. Um, so if there's something that you're hoping to develop and you don't know how, just send me an email. We can bring it into the live stream as long as I have your approval. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Good to see you. See you. <laughs> All right. So again, I will go ahead and end the live stream. I'm going to let you guys uh, let you guys go. Um, I'll keep the chat running an additional minute or two for any last minute questions and comments. And then we'll end for today. And we'll see you Wednesday next week. Uh, what are we building Wednesday next week? That's a good question. So let's see. What do we have going for next week? We are going to be building an event planning app. So here's a question for you. Do you want me to do a live build of this event planning app? Let's do a, let's do a vote, quick vote here. Maybe we can do a poll. Can we do a poll just for fun? Uh, how do you do a poll here? In Here we go, start a poll. All right, ask a question. Uh, do you want to see a live build of the event planning app? Uh, yes and no, right? So yes, no, and ask your community. Let's see if that's where I've never done a poll here. So let's just see how it works. You want to see a live build of the event planning app? There we go. Yes and no. Uh, we got one yes. Don't be afraid to say no too. It's fine, you know. So far, we have 100% yes. All right, we'll give it a few more seconds. But I think the overall, two votes so far. So we have two votes in, 100%. So we can do a live build next week of the event planning app. All right, awesome. So we'll do, we'll do a live build of the event planning app next week. And... Um, I don't have all the requirements and the scope created yet, but the idea is kind of like the knowledge base where, you know, you see a listing of events on somebody's website, corporate website. So if you were going to the home page, maybe you have uh, a link up here that says company and in the sub menu, you have events, you click on the events link and then you see a nice image maybe of the events, information about the event, and then you can sign up for that event. Okay. We might even put a limiter on how many people can sign up for the event and might even go as far as uh, put in a um, registration end date. So if the um, using a task, if we the uh, registration date expires, then we no longer show that event on the website. Right. And also, if we reach the class capacity or event capacity, again, we don't want to show that event on the website. Uh, so maybe we have two rules added to the application that way. Right. And then in the back office, when you log in, you're going to be able to see all the attendees uh, that are coming to your event. You can send them an email, you know, notifying them maybe a day or a week before the event. Hey, the event's coming up. Uh, make sure you attend or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So we'll do a live build of that. Thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate it. Have a good day and we'll see you next week. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.